All right, so good evening, and um, want to talk through a project I've been working on. Let's see, get it loaded here. So, so this game is called I'm calling it Micro Hack, or sort of a spinoff of Net Hack. This case, written for the Mini Micro, just sort of a uh, virtual retro computing system. It is a roguelike game. Its premise is you start at the top of the world in this little village that is some for some reason I've yet to find decide on the final contrived reason for why there is only this one village. But you're stuck here. Nobody can get in or out. You have to go into the depths of the dungeon to find out why. I am not going to spill the beans on what the reason why is just yet, but it's going to be a great reason, and you're going to have to go deeper and deeper into the dungeon to solve the mystery of why everyone is stuck. So, that is the basic premise of the game. It is a roguelike game. The villagers are randomly generated to a certain degree. The village is randomly generated. Dungeons are going to be randomly generated. And uh, so I started this project last April, 2023. Worked on it about a month. Took a break from it for various life reasons. Got back, started getting back to it in December. And I'm kind of excited about it. Like, we'd like to see it finished. So I figured I would do a series of YouTube videos to document my progress. And we'll just see how it goes. If you I'm gonna see if I can tackle a particular feature here, which is this mini map you can see in the top right corner. I added this over the last couple of days. It is incomplete. I'd like it to be bigger. I'd like it to not show these little dots for the the entities that are on hidden tiles. I only want it to show the position of entities if you can actually see them. I don't know. I'm, I'm undecided on that point, but that's where I'm going to go for now. I'd like to be able to like double the size of the mini map in the visual, and then see if I can make it fill most of the screen when you hit the M key. And uh, let's see how far I can get today. I'm going to try to keep this to a half hour. So, mini micro coding is done in a language called Miniscript. It's a uh, It the uh, the nature of the language is almost like Python, where it's like a it looks like an interpreted language, but it gets uh, compiled internally down to uh, bytecode that's run on a virtual machine. Performance is pretty good. If you, if you're, I mean, you can't can't be a lazy coder. You got to write good code. If you write good code, you'll get good. At it. it supports it supports a uh, object oriented programming. So it's uh, it uh, takes care of a lot of the handling the graphics and sound for you, so you don't have to dig a lot into how the hardware actually works, which is nice. But uh, right now, I'm working on this draw minimap function. There's a lot of things I want to do to improve this. The display I'm working on now, like the, the mini micro is split up into, I think it's eight visual displays that are layered. If you go over to the wiki, you can see that, uh, yeah, eight displays, from zero through seven. Zero is the front, seven is the back. Each one you can assign to a different type of display. You have all these displays you can choose from. There's, an, there's a default setup, but you can also configure it however you want to. I had it running all text displays until very recently because that's traditionally how learning roguelikes are done in text. I switched to tile display recently, so I can. I, I want more tiles. I, I am greedy for all the tiles, and I wanted to have uh, get some of the graphic strong characters from the 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 you know, OEM four three seven code page or CP four three seven code page, uh, depending on where you're reading. I wanted graphic strong characters, and I'm probably going to add even more tile tiles graphic tile graphics as we move along. Um, 
um, but the minimap. So basically, every tile has a foreground color and a background color. I'm scanning the scene and every place where the player has the tile is marked as having been visited, we go ahead and draw that tile's foreground color here. And you can see that in the code in the draw minimap. See, self is a reference to this instance of the map object. It initially it draws the rectangle, and uh, it's a brown rectangle that's going to surround the map. And then it loops through all the x and y coordinates for the for the entire map. If that tile has been visited, get the tile at the x and y coordinates. If it has been visited, we grab the tile, grab the foreground color, and then set the pixel to that color. And if it has not been visited, then we set the pixel to gray. So I'm going to do a couple things here to make this a little bit more efficient. We don't need to be getting the tile over and over and again. Uh, let's go ahead and refactor the x and y coordinates too. And then down here, we're drawing all the entities. An entity is any, it can be like a sign or a person or a monster or anything. I'll get, I'll get into that probably much later. Um, so first thing I'm wanting to do, I'm wanting to make this twice as big, kind of on the line on whether I should use the internal draw rect function for this, or if I should just set four pixels. I think, I think we're going to start by doing a bunch of draw rect calls. And I just got to figure out how I want to do it. Let's start by just replacing the set pixel with the draw rect directly. So let's, act, let's see the function signature there. If we go back here to our pixel display, which has the draw rect function, I'm sure it's right in front of me. There it is. Left bottom width, height, color, pin size. Think about pin size for a minute. Uh, that might actually save us some time later. I'll come back to that. Uh, left bottom width height. So I'm going to start with a cell size of what? Just duplicate exactly what is already happening. So width and height are both set to cell size. And then the X and Y are just what we already had. We're going to just kind of see what that looks like. And it's probably going to look awful. And that's okay. I'm always surprised when the stuff I write works the very first time. Been doing this since the late 80s, and I'm still surprised when stuff works the first time I try it. All right. Yeah, um, basically, the only way out right now is to control C. Uh, cleaning that up is a uh, to do. So I type the word clear. You can't see it because the text display is hidden. But um, reset basically clears out all the existing environment variables. Reload the program. There is the, the main function of the program and run. And we're back. And you can see our first problem there. We're not crashing. We can still move around. But also, the map is not being rendered at all. Most of it. There's some some kind of goop up there that I'm, I'm not sure what's going on. <laughs> but uh, it, would, it would be boring if it worked the first time. OK, let's take a look. Let's, uh, that's why width, height, color, pen size. Let's just go with that. Pen size is one. The cell size is one. Left, bottom, width, and height. Mm 
revert that to the pixel display and make sure I didn't break anything in all my refactoring. Give it a second. Oh, that really did break something. Oh, okay, just had to reset. Okay. So that's actually encouraging. Reverting that to the set pixel code still has it broken, which means that something I refactored, but I didn't do it right. Oh. Um <laughs> I'm recess. Reassigning the for loop variables. Let's say that's Rx and Ry for render X and render Y. State bound languages can be tough. There's pros and cons. If that fixes the min minimap back to where it was before, then yeah, okay. Now we can retry with the draw bet call. No, which still doesn't. No, <laughs> it actually does work. It's just on the wrong side of the screen. That's fun. Let's see if we can fix that right quick. R R. Yeah, actually use those variables that I created. Make this work one little piece at a time, and we're back. But now we're using draw rec instead of set pixel. Which is good. So let's try setting the cell size to two. Now we have to concern ourselves with the render width, which will no longer match the map width. So it's the map width times cell size. And I want to scale the coordinates according to the cell size. Bring it the thing about coordinates here in the mini micro. Zero zero is the bottom left, I believe. So top right. The like the the maximum coordinates are in the top right, so it's like more like if it's more mathematically correct. It's just uh, different from every from the way monitor graphic like computer graphics do normally works. So once you get used to it, it's a good thing. Uh, let's see what that did. There you go, twice as big. Cool. Next problem, our little outline is too small. It's a funny problem. And our entities have to be scaled. So that is actually a lot easier to fix. With height. Okay, that should fix the the border. And to use the same variable names here so we don't get ourselves in trouble. Render width, render height. See what's going on down here. We can iterate over the entities array. And each entity has a position field. So it's a points type. You can see it off in the side here. I'm not digging into it right now. And the entity also has a tile. And just like up here in the map, that every tile has a foreground color. So we're grabbing that. And that becomes the tile we draw on the screen. And 
send it might be that simple. Let's find out if it's that simple. That is almost perfect. There's two problems. One of them, entities are not showing up on our nice little mini map at all. And I can't see the top and right hand sides of the of the map mini map border. And I really want to see those. Okay, more debugging. Um For one thing, that's not actually Rx and R. So Rx was that guy. And Ry was that guy. You can see up here, we need to be multiplying by cell size. Let's just see if that worked. And we'll work on the border. All right. So you can see all of our little entities now. The girls are pink and the boys are blue. I know it's cliche. I'm sorry. There you go. I'll get to the name generator later. It's kind of fun. Now let's fix the map border and then we'll work on hiding entities that should be hidden. First, let's set a border width. Fix width minus render width minus border width times two because there's two borders on each side. And the complete width of the border is the width of the rendered map plus the width of the borders, I think. Let's get this pulled out a little bit. I just I don't like my code going off the edge of the screen. I want to keep all my code where I can see it. I problem here with uh, reusing a variable. Can't do that. Not like that anyway. Okay, so that might fix the border. Let's find out. And wow, Adam sort of fixed it. I think the problem is we have to actually offset where we're drawing the map. And then I think it'll be perfect. So. But let's see if this helps. We can actually set up a transform function inside of this function to help pull the logic out a little bit, but uh, you know, it's probably not worth it. That was too much. <laughs> because I've used border width instead of border size. Oops.
And no, I need a little bit more. It's those little things that uh, can drive you nuts, like that one little pixel right there. Border size. Let's try this. If it looks right, then we'll call it done. <laughs> now it's on the other side. Like there's a... Am I off by half a pixel? I don't know. This feels ugly, but I'm going to do it anyway. Ta-da! Now it works. Okay, next problem. I don't want it showing all these little dots. You shouldn't be able to see entities in a part of the map that you're not on. I think I'm just going to hide that entity if the that tile is currently not visible for any reason. So let's do that. So what we want. Get the map instance. That function is visible. I'm going to reuse that here. So, don't forget you're not. Yeah, you have to write out the not. I switch languages so often I forget if I need to be writing not or exclamation. But this in, in mini script, it is a, you actually have to write out the word not. Ta-da! Oh, it's beautiful. All right, so so yeah, eventually we're gonna be plopping down a village up here, cleaning up the overworld generator a little bit. There's random villagers that are just gonna be randomly generated. They get random names, and right now it's a uh, it's pulling a a one one liner of text out of a a file. So not much to it yet. And we put filling it the, the village with special NPCs later on to give you quests. You shop and whatever. Press you can you move around with the arrow keys. The E key is to examine. So you press E, tells you examine in which direction, hit your direction. Well you see grass there, it's really not much to see. Let's see if we can examine this guy. There you go. If you examine a uh, uh, NPC, you'll talk to it. If you want different kind of detail, I mean, you can hit the semicolon, and you'll get a cursor. Oh, the minimap hides the text there. We'll fix that in just a minute. Okay, so move the little cursor around, select the person, and it'll give you a description of that person. a bit more useful when you go down into the dungeon. And look, there's a rat. Let's examine the rat. And you can see some details of this here rat. And right now you just ram the rat to, to attack. Oh, see, there's some studded leather. Let's go. Press G to pick it up. Press I for inventory. A healing potion, we leave that alone. Dagger, we're, the E right there means it's already equipped. It also says it there in green. And press enter on this guy to equip it. Enter. And if you go back to inventory, you'll see there's an E there now. And 
And you know, I was thinking about making it so you hit the M key to make the mini map bigger, but I'm not sure it's necessary now. I feel like this size is big enough. Oh, what I'm doing now, basically you hit the R key to rest. You can see that your health is, the health is at 11 of 21. Your guy is gonna keep turning more and more red until he eventually just dies. But if you keep hitting the R key, the longer you rest, it increases the odds that you'll heal by one HP. So you just keep hitting it. If you're in a safe area, you can rest for a while and heal. Every level, as it's configured right now, has a treasure room. And some chance of a doodad being dropped in each of the rooms. What do we have here? It's a short sword. Let's, let's get it. And we're about at, it's not quite a half hour, but that was the full feature I was wanting to implement here. So I'm probably just going to, oh, hold on. Yeah, rats and cobalts. No, no, I, let's see, do I want to fix that in this video? I'll show you one way that we could fix it. Here. You go back to the map, no, not to the main function, you can see that there's a collection of displays. And the pixel display that the map is drawn on is at the front with the, the HUD right behind it, heads up display. And one way that you could fix this is by changing the order of displays. which will then lead to other problems, which I will go ahead and show you. There you go. <laughs> uh, we're not, I'm not using this for any text. I think I'm just going to not draw so many black spaces there. If we go down here, draw HUD. Display width, minus the length of the status bar. Let's cut it five spaces short and see what it looks like. Just be my solution for now. It's close. Let's do 10. This is going to have other problems. But, uh, you know, that looks okay. And then when we go looking around, it's our Look around cursor. Hey, it's a sign. The sign reads, under construction, please come back later. Well, I hope you all do come back later. I'm going to try to post these updates on a regular basis, and we'll see how it goes. Thanks for watching.